The readings today which focus on leprosy seem to have little relevance to us. I'm quite sure that none of us know any lepers. But on closer inspection, we can see that the gospel offers us an important lesson in compassion. Now, unlike our contemporary culture, leprosy was well understood in ancient times. The disease attacked the nerves in the skin and was horrific. Toes and fingers would drop off. Teeth would fall out. And as the disease advanced, it consumed flesh to the point where certain lepers became unrecognizable. And the lepers not only had to deal with these terrible physical afflictions, but also they were ostracized from their community for fear of contagion. The Jews wanted to keep separate the clean from the unclean, the pure from the impure, and lepers were deemed impure. To this day, some Orthodox Jews maintain separate dishes for kosher clean food from non-kosher food. So the culture was different, the appreciation was different, and lepers ended up feeling ostracized. Now, Jesus also touched the leper, and that's a shocking aspect of this gospel. We really don't fully appreciate how shocking this gospel would have been to Jesus' contemporaries. First of all, the leper has the temerity to approach Jesus. Lepers were supposed to maintain their distance and cry out, unclean, unclean, if they came anywhere near other people. And on top of that, Jesus reaches out and touches the leper, which according to Jewish laws rendered Jesus unclean, but our Lord was moved with compassion. And Jesus didn't flout all the Jewish laws because in the gospel we hear that Jesus instructs the healed man to go to the priest so that he can be declared clean and rejoin his community. So what does all this have to do with us? Well, Jesus shows us the importance of compassion which we could really use more of in the world today. The very word compassion means to suffer with, and there is lots of suffering. All of us, sooner or later, will experience suffering. We may experience pain or suffering because of something going on at school or at work. Perhaps relationships are not all they could be. We may be dealing with death or disease or some other sort of loss. So suffering afflicts us all, and we could use a little more compassion. In our lives, one of the most important things we can do is reach out and help people who are suffering, especially like the leper, by reason of isolation. Isolation, healthcare professionals tell us, is a very serious problem in the United States and throughout the world. People especially experience isolation upon the death of a family member or close friend. If you've lost a loved one, you know how comforting it is when someone comes to the funeral parlor or attends mass following the death. And touching at a time like this can be so important, it can be healing. I know a woman who's not the touchy-feely type at all, but when her mother died and I went to the funeral parlor, she extended her arms upon seeing me. She needed to be hugged, and it was healing for her. Touching or hugging can do more good than any words we might offer. And we need to remember, too, that after the burial, we should continue to reach out to the grieving person. And just a phone call or a visit, talking about the deceased can be helpful. And we can ask the question, how are you feeling today? That's a better question than, how are you? 
which we say sometimes without thinking about it, well, how do you think I am? My spouse just died. The better question is, how are you feeling today? Because it recognizes the grief and the suffering is respectful, and it can make a difference. Our compassion can make a difference. Now, there are other types of isolation. For example, we increasingly see isolation of caregivers of loved ones who are going through Alzheimer's or some other form of dementia. The caregiver may feel lonely and isolated. A spouse, for example, caring for another spouse may feel totally isolated as he or she sees the mate slowly drift away. So we should reach out to those caregivers. Perhaps take the caregiver out to lunch or a movie, ideally by also arranging for care for the person who needs the attention. Or at least we can just talk to the caregiver about the situation. We can suffer with that person. And again, it can make a difference. Compassion is so healing and important. And when we're compassionate, it actually benefits us, as this real life story illustrates. There's a girl in high school, we'll call her Nancy. And Nancy seems to be particularly withdrawn and quiet. Her mother notices something's wrong. Mothers have this sixth sense. And she asks Nancy, is everything OK? Nancy says, fine. What's the matter? Nothing. Well. The mother knows better, and she keeps probing. And eventually, Nancy opens up and admits that she feels sad and lonely because she doesn't have any friends. Well, the mother offers words of consolation. I am so sorry. That must be so hard. And the mother embraces her daughter, and they shed some tears. And then the mother offers some very practical, wise advice. She says, Nancy, do you know anyone who seems maybe even more lonely than you are. And Nancy thinks and remembers there's a girl at school who at lunch sits by herself. She's always alone. And the mother says, well, why don't you go up to her and just see what happens? So the next day, Nancy joins this girl at lunch. And in short order, they become best friends. Nancy's problem solved and the lonely girl's problem solved. Compassion benefits everyone. So although we don't know anyone who suffers from leprosy, there are plenty of people around us who feel as lonely and as isolated as the lepers who were ostracized in ancient times. And in truth, we are all lepers sooner or later. We all feel lonely and isolated. This gospel reminds us how important it is to be compassionate. And as you'll hear in a moment, this is an opportune time this weekend for us to show our compassion to others in our community.